what a deserving win they've had two years before at Lords. They had lost to England, the ICC World Championship. And today they have won this elusive, the ultimate World Test Championship. And the wait for Virat Kali still goes on. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Straight Bat with Gulf News and Mr. Cricket UAE, that is Anis Sajan. So here we are back today with the ultimate test, that is that World Test Cricket Challenge Championship between India and New Zealand. New Zealand has turned out to be worthy victors, eight wicket victory, and that too in a match which, which, we, uh, which we thought would be affected by rain. In fact, it was affected by rain, two full days of match, full days of uh, play lost, and several sessions lost to rain. But yet, in the end, New Zealand won by eight wickets. Uh, with me to, to dis discuss the match is Anis Sajan and Gautam Bhattacharya. Anis, what do you make of the match? Uh, good evening, Sham. Good evening, Gautam. Good evening, all the gorgeous people of Gulf News. Yesterday, when we were talking, we thought draw is the likely result. But New Zealand bowlers had other ideas. And when they were chasing a meager total of 139, Williamson and Ross Taylor soaked up the pressure put on by Ashwin in the start. And what a deserving win they have had. Two years before, at Lords, they had lost to England, the ICC World Championship. And today, they have won this elusive, the ultimate World Test Championship. And the wait for Virat Kali still goes on. So this has been cricket at its highest quality. One team, the deserving team, has gone on to win. That is New Zealand. Uh, Gautam, you can't get, get New Zealand's victory, is it? No, no, absolutely not. I mean, it was a very fulfilling uh, test match. And New Zealand, as uh, Anish Bhai said, I mean, it, uh, it, it could be just a coincidence, but it, it started as a cycle. I mean, within months of that heartbreak at Lords, this World Test Championship cycle started with the Ashes. And today, New Zealand's journey ends in a brilliant fashion. I mean, it's it's, uh, it's uh, actually poetic justice, and it uh, having lost the world, world, world uh, that were the World Cup so closely, having won came so closely, and yet losing in a very tragic fashion. So this is uh, justice served in a, in, a, in 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 a manner of speaking, really. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. But if you look back, at the seeds of this victory has been laid in the run, run up to this tournament or run up to the test. Uh, can you elaborate on that? Uh, of course, uh, Sham, you know, uh, when you talk about the first innings of India, when we have 142 for three, going into the third day after the first day was washed out, Carl Jamison came back and took the prize wicket of uh, Virat Kohli. And then he picked up four more wickets. And that is where he halted India to 270. And mind you, India had come back with the bowlers. But the last five batsmen put on 110 runs, whereas India's last five batsmen put on 60-odd runs. So that 30 runs lead in the end, to be very honest, proved to be very, very decisive. So it's like gold, gold dust for New Zealand. And that 30 runs, I wouldn't say that that made New Zealand win. But probably with that mindset, India went into the match to save the game rather than to go for a win. And uh, in the end, New Zealand uh, were too good, both with the ball, with the bat. And mind you, they held their catches, bearing one drop catch of uh, Shappan by Saudi. Before the, uh, the test started, we, uh, I mean, I, I had uh, personally put my, stuck my neck out and said that the, the team which bats better will win simply because that was on the basis that both the teams have very good pace attack. So, who, whichever batsman conquers the conditions will win. Kodam, uh, did, uh, did that happen here? Yes, absolutely, Sham. I mean, uh, for... If we compare the two, I mean, a number of factors made the difference. I mean, one of the biggest factors was Ken Williamson's approach in both the innings, 49 and again a half century here. The other thing was the contribution about of the tail enders, the three key partnerships in the first innings, which gave them those, you know, those 25, 30 runs, but as Anis uh, summed it up, that worth its weight in gold. And then finally, you know, the overall quality of swing bowling between the two teams. That, again, made the difference. Uh, Gautam, you hit, on the nail, uh, hit the nail on the head there. New Zealand, as a bowling pack, bowled much better than India. Do you agree with that, Anis? 
yes of course sham you have to agree that i remember we discussing in the first night when india had batted that probably new zealand has missed the trick by not taking a spinner and in the end we felt that it was turning and biting uh, at when ashwin was bowling and to some stage jadeja but you have to give it to their bowlers after that first hour in the on the first second day rather when india batted uh, their bowlers came back and kept that tidy line and length wherein indian bowlers were a bit short in their length especially the fast bowlers bumra uh, i would say more of even the other fast bowlers erred in their length and that was the difference between the two sides if you see uh, the height which uh, kyle jamison used he was making sure that he was bowling at back of the length ball which was straightening enough where the batsman like virat kohli was just poking it and edging it and that proved to be the difference the swing bowling of new zealand was better than the indian swing bowling india was more of seam new zealand was more of swing uh i know it say it is uh, it's uh, it's uh, no point in discussing what happened earlier but we did mention in our preview about the balance of the attack whether the whether the, whether the side india needed two spinners so in hindsight uh, that the, that didn't really work out didn't, uh, didn't it uh, gautam two spinners was a luxury in this pitch yes yes sham will will have to admit that two spinners uh, you know the ploy of keeping two spinners especially when india got the opportunity to change the side if they wanted to that didn't work because till the the fifth day i mean till the fifth day uh, there there was hardly any warranteer on the wicket i mean whatever was there some bowlers footmark but it was a very good wicket i would sporting wicket i would say and uh, today ashwin he was trying all the tricks in the bag to get something out of that one that straightened you know that that gave him a wicket Uh, another one was his you know that hurry through but overall uh, you know uh, two spinners uh, as as nasir husain i think said at one point of time that it's it's a luxury he was very categorical about it and uh, i think we'll have to go agree with that uh, and is uh, before the test match started uh, uh, or because india had announced the team and sunil gavaskar said on the fourth and fifth day the spinners could be handful could be very uh, handy actually uh, but uh, when, when you look back even in the indian in victories in england where uh, i can only remember the 1971 win being uh, brought by the spinners that is that to the with a wizard called bs chandrashekar after that it has been the indian million people's pacers who had uh, uh, carved out victories for india so i don't remember a time when uh I, after barring 71 or after the post 71 session i don't remember an instance of spinners bringing victory for india in england so i don't know where and uh, where this uh undue emphasis on spinners uh uh adult uh, i mean this is not the first time like if you remember the i remember and even mentioned that the last time also uh, you know, during a tour of england uh, shastri and uh, kohli made the mistake of uh, packing in a spinner when uh, pace was the order of the day so can you elaborate on that yes sham uh, you know let's be very upfront about it uh, that india had an opportunity like gautam mentioned to change the squad after the first day was washed out and you could see the forecast as well as it was cloudy and the condition demanded an extra seamer if india wanted to go with one spinner it would have been fine now today it's you know easy for us after the defeat to speak but uh, it was more logical and that is why probably new zealand did not go without any spinner uh, which was like taking a big big risk but india had the luxury of having one spinner so in hindsight we probably felt because the bowlers were tiring or whether it was shami bumrah or ishan after bowling uh, long spells so that one extra seamer would have definitely made a difference and who knows what would have happened uh, if we had gone with that extra seamer because in the end we took that spinner in jadeja who we thought who would bat but unfortunately he couldn't uh, deliver with the bat and with the ball uh, i'm afraid uh, also he couldn't pick up any wickets so in hindsight we can say india probably missed a trick uh, by not picking up that extra seamer in uh, uh, siraj here anyway, the match is done and dusted and new, new zealand are the winners of the ultimate test and where is uh, thoroughly uh, thoroughly winning the uh, uh, side really and kane williamson for his fantastic effort they they deserved it now where do india go from here because we have t- the test against new uh, against england coming up go them 
Yeah, I think, see, uh, there is no need to worry as such. I mean, the, the, here uh, we are talking about the spinner, all right, but it's also a fact that in both innings, the batting imploded to a certain extent. First innings, we uh, we have discussed about it from that 146 for three uh, in 70 odd runs, losing seven wickets. Second innings, if uh, Rishabh Panth hadn't played that innings of 41, uh, you know, the, the match would have been over much before. So, it would have been very really embarrassing. Yeah. So, if the batting remains a key area, then that, you know, that additional spinner or not, I mean, that, that factor gets receded into the background. But I'm sure, you know, uh, the, the, the team's think tank, the, the decision is going to be questioned. Number one. Number two is there is more than a, there is a six week gap now uh, before the first test starts on you know, August 4. And uh, the team is actually getting holiday for some three weeks. So they'll be doing their holiday there. But in this, uh, in the meanwhile, what's happening is India, uh, the Indian B team, they're playing this uh, one uh, white ball series in Sri Lanka. So depending on how uh, Bhuvaneshwar Kumar's uh, fitness holds up, if he can bowl that 15, 17 overs on a given day, then one can think about it. it it's all, all actually optional. The only only advantage with him is he's he's a guy. He's an all-rounder actually, you know. So uh, otherwise, you already have Shiraj in the team. He deserves a break. He he's a he's a superior quality swing bowler really, and he's a very rhythm bowler. I mean, he he's a guy who can really do that damage if he's up to it. Uh, and is, what do you think of the India prospects for the forthcoming test against England, uh, on the, especially in view of this defeat against, uh, uh, a, a, or say, New Zealand for that matter? Uh, I would say that, uh, I mean, the India may have lost, but there is no, no uh, there is nothing to be ashamed of because they had a very good run up to, up to the tournament that they were beaten by a, a wonderful side or a, a, a good, uh, very balanced side. So now what we need to look at is the, uh, test series coming about against England and your thoughts on that? You are absolutely right that you don't have to be ashamed uh, that you one team wins and one team loses but like uh, Gautam mentioned you know it's the batting which is a worrying thing after the Australian series if you see even on England uh, against the test series in England India's batting faltered when they lost the first test match and then bearing uh, Rohit Sharma who played one innings of 160 the rest, all the batsmen have struggled, uh, whether it is Pujara. We had a Rishabh Pant special in the last innings of that test match. And even in this, this test match, if you have to see, uh, we had starts, but nobody went on to make a big score, whether it is Virat Kohli, whether it is Ajinkya Rahane, whether it is Rishabh Pant, whether it is Rohit Sharma, whether it is Shubman Gill. So I'm afraid if India has to compete well in England, where they have miserably failed in the last three series, if their batting doesn't come to the party, India will struggle again. No matter how good your bowling is, but you need some runs on the board to defend. And today, that's what was a difference. Had India got that extra 50 runs, who knows what would have happened. So, the batting has to come to the party. And mind you, England are not going to dish out flat wickets. The conditions depends on the overhead uh, skies. But they are going to keep grass as India kept uh, during their series where they made spinning wickets. So, Kodam, over the next six weeks, do you think that you know, do you see India just start uh, fine-tuning their batting and be ready for the English bowlers? Remember, we have they, they still have Anderson around. See, fine-tuning can only be done like after when they reassemble after these three weeks or so. The the BCCI should get moving in trying to organize at least uh, a couple of uh, core games. You know, those three-day, four-day games which they used to play before. Now, I am told that, you know, this, these games are, again, in these times of pandemic, apparently these games are a bit of a problem. They are not that easy to organize. This, this squad that, is, that will be going to uh, Sri Lanka, now trust Rahul Dravid had already asked for a few warm-up games and he has been denied. He said that, no, you'll have to play intra-squad games. So I don't know whether that is going to be possible. If possible, they should try to play and look at what other options they have. See, they I, they only have KL Rahul to fit in somewhere because you, the other problem that you have is your number five, your uh, you know uh, Ujara and uh, number five um, Rahane. They are also becoming concern areas. So, uh, so that these these are some of the things that need to be addressed. I think only spending time in the middle can be the only solution, and uh, for that. If they don't get these tour matches, 
uh, then you know like uh, i think i think it has to be left to uh, you know practice time rather than game time more practice time possibly yeah that is a huge handicap the lack of uh, practice matches and you you i mean that was a good explanation of why why the why there can't be tour matches because normally tour matches help help uh, fine tune your technique not just that also a week, uh, it helps you to find out the batsman in form or the bowler in form so that opportunity is lost here which means we would go back into the england series which is pretty much the same squad and with the same same issues uh, are you pointed out pujara pujara and rahane's issues pujara i would think uh, uh, maybe after australia he had a very good run so did rahane and after that we didn't see much of that uh, uh, anish do you think those are pro- problem areas pujara and rahane yes very much uh, pujara's last 100 came probably 3 years ago uh, that also was in 2018 if i'm not wrong at the same ground if i'm not wrong he scored an 100 at this ground against yes, england yes. it's been long time coming and when you talk about rahane uh, bearing that 100 which he scored against australia in melbourne where india bounced back to square the series he scored one half century he was eluded of a half century in this match but concerns are there and so uh, like you were talking about the practice game you know you see bcci is rich enough to probably uh, you know the earlier thing was uh, thought was that they will be having practice match with the a team and the b team so i am not i'm i'm a bit surprised why this was not organized okay if you cannot get from uh, the county teams you can probably be play a proper practice match between your a team and b team because what you do as a practice match and what you do between yourself between your 15 guys or 18 guys is a different thing a competitive match definitely makes a difference and you that gives you enough batting or bowling time and in this match like they mentioned about why bumra was not able to bowl the right length or shami not able to bowl the right length is bowlers also need practice like batsmen so i'm afraid uh, india lacked that but uh, they have now time against uh, the england series instead of holidaying for 3 weeks probably they can holiday for 10 days and do the practice and be ready to take on england and to show that that was a one of defeat against new zealand they are still the number one side okay albeit that new zealand is now the number one side but you need to prove it to the world yes you are world beaters by beating england in their own den uh the england series uh, is uh, six weeks away and we will all get another opportunity to discuss the prospects of it but since it is six weeks away uh, let Uh, let's look at the series and say what what do you what do you think uh, are the india's prospects given the showing in this match no i think uh, india were definitely a bit undercooked here only point is you know this six week is a very unusual gap you know had it been that okay after about you know in a, in a space of 7 to 10 days the series is starting we could have said that uh, the team would have galvanized better and do better so it it's going to be effectively a fresh start i i don't think there is any you know uh, any reason for any radical change i mean if they want to play an extra batsman i mean they they can you know think of uh, uh, somebody with a bit of resilience so that's where hanuma bihari score comes to mind bihari yeah so he should be your man because uh, sham the first test match you're going to play in trenbridge which is a very you know the typical english atmosphere and the ball will do a bit and uh, as we all know that after that experience england has had Uh, on the Ahmedabad wicket and Chennai wicket uh, is going to be. They are going to pay back in the same coin. <laughs> they will be ready for us. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, what are your thoughts, Arif? Why you? you they, I mean, definitely, I, I completely agree with Gautam on the fact that they will be ready for us with some real seeming wickets, real wicked ones, really. So, but but the, the, there is also a, that's a double-edged uh, uh, double-edged sword here, simply because. india has a very good uh, uh, seam attack as well whereas in, in spinning we get say india i mean england in have as good as spinners as india had so do you think the seeming seeming wickets england prepares will backfire on them and is not really last year also they had prepared seeming wickets and the difference was the batting where in only virat kohli was scoring runs the uh, rest all were struggling you do not want 30s and 40s you want hundreds and in english conditions even if you are set at 60 or 70 you might get a good ball and you might edge it so the more you can you would know where your off stump is or where the ball is pitching and you let that ball go 
uh, you can score big runs. And that is what uh, Virat Kohli showed last time. And we saw that in this test match. I'm afraid we had not 150 in the whole test match. Uh, if I'm right, uh, not one guy scored a 50. And that proved to be the difference. Where at, uh, whereas for New Zealand, you had a 50 from Devon Conway. You had a 50 from uh, your captain, uh, oh. Williamson. And yeah. He showed uh, so much of resilience. He, like He fought hard. You see, the difference between the two teams. Whereas New Zealand soaked up the pressure when it mattered. Whenever there was an opportunity, they grabbed it with both hands. Whereas India had its moments, India let it slip away. Uh, just to come back to this match, I mean, I, I can't seem to get away from it simply because, uh, simply because yesterday I said that uh, that one forty three for three to two seventeen all out was in my back of my mind. Why I said that is because we have seen this. Uh, this is a kind of uh, a, a recurring nightmare for India because this we have seen that happen several times in the past. I the one of them which I'll never forget is uh, uh, losing a match to Australia in a session when Michael Clark uh, uh, came in and bowled his left arm spinners. And Michael Clark is, is a part-time bowler and we succumbed to them and we lost the match badly. So this this uh, and uh, this also happened when Moina same with the same venue where, where Moina Ali uh, turned it uh, with eight wickets. In both, both, both innings, so this is a kind of uh, kind of brutality which we see f- far too often. Either or when when uh, when the openers bat, every or everybody else will pitch in. When the openers fail, uh, they will be fall in a heap. What is the remedy you see here? You said uh, there are possible spots, uh, slots where Rahane and Pujara could be replaced, but beyond Hanuma Vihari or, or KL Rahul, will you, will you, do you think that will uh, help repair this brutality. One thing is, uh, you know, uh, it may sound strange if I say so, but there should be more accountability from the senior players. I mean, uh, uh, somebody like Rohit Sharma, who is a white ball king, I mean, in that uh, last England World Cup, five centuries he has scored there. Obviously, the, the type of games are like, are like chalk and cheese, but he should be able to, you know, greet his teeth and hang on there. I mean, no excuse is uh, good enough there. Uh, Shubman Gill, we know that he he has the technique, but he has been, you know, he has been groomed, he has been uh, touted as the next big thing in, uh, in Indian batting for about uh, four years now. So, these two guys, it's not a question of uh, Pujara and Rahane alone. I mean, Pujara has shown enormous character uh, uh, in overseas conditions. Yeah, same with Rahane. So these batsmen need to, you know, really uh, take it to the next level because option-wise, you don't have much. You can use uh, maybe KL Rahul as, in, at, a, at the number three slot or maybe you can think about tinkering the opening slot, but that is no guarantee. Then again, Hanuma Bihari, you're trying to, it's a question of if you want to play that extra batsman. But we have seen that, you know, three seamers are often either, either it, it, it's, instead of using spinners just for change of ends or to hasten, uh, you know, getting your new ball, that fourth seamer is necessary. Now, whom you're going to get, if you're going to play a complete bowler in uh, uh, Shiraj and go all out, fine. But I think you will need a bit of support in your uh, number seven uh, position. So you can also think of Shardul Thakur. May not be the best bet, but he's the best available uh, that you have under the circumstances. Or if you feel that Bhubaneswar Kumar can can manage the workload, then by all means you should take him. Yeah, uh, yeah in any case, uh, I don't think India will be playing two spinners. Uh, uh, I mean, at least for the, for the rest of the England tour. Yeah. <laughs> do you, I do hope you they don't. That? Yeah. Of course, I hope they don't. We are go on making these big statements at the start of the match that our bowlers are good for all conditions. Let's let's accept the fact. That has backfired very badly. And not for the first time. Yes. I, I guess uh, that, that is all, that's all for today. Unless you have some, something more to add, I think we can call it a day. Well, Sham, I can yeah. only say, as I mentioned in my introduction, uh, that the wait for an ICC trophy, in fact, incidentally, it was eight years ago. Today, we had won the Champions Trophy, beating England in their hometown. And after that, uh, we probably have lost the Champions Trophy final to Pakistan. We've lost the semi-final to New Zealand last year. 
in 2019, then the T20 World Cup. We've been coming close, but I, I said we have been the bridesmaid. Right. But Gautam, don't you agree that we still have the team to do it? No, see, that, uh, that's why that's why the regret, the level of regret is much more. I mean, I think uh, uh, Anis must have experienced it, but uh, the, his heart burns will be more. I mean, I, I was down there as a spectator, but I had gone to you know, one of the few matches that I watched was India versus Bangladesh. So I saw Rohit on song there at uh, Edgbaston. So uh, anyway, we, we do have the team, but I think we also need to talk about uh, New Zealand a bit. I mean, for with the limited resources that this team has, the planning had been wonderful. Uh, the only uh, grouse that is often wrecked up against them is they're, they're good enough, you know, very good at home, but not they don't travel that uh, that well. Right. In England, this time they had the conditions which was very akin to uh, New Zealand. But they should also, by the time the next cycle of uh, WTC starts, they should look at, you know, being being an all-weather team kind of a thing. I think they need, uh, you know, at least one to two decent spinners for that. And, you know, they can they can gradually try to make a match of it. So this is it. That, that's all we can say at this point. All right. So I, I think that, that that wraps up pretty much everything. And uh, we will look forward to the series against England with fresh hope and optimism. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, with this uh, with this edition for the world uh, world test cricket championship and we will be back with you for, for the next uh, series against england but, uh, till then please uh, log on to our gulfnews.com for frequent updates as well as our social media channels instagram and facebook <laughs>